Today I'm talking all about my February makes and my March plans, so let's jump into it. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Elizabeth from ElizabethMayThis.com. If this is your first time here, I share lots of inspiration and tips and tutorials to help you sew so quick, so confidently, and so creatively. So if that sounds like something that is up your alley, don't forget to subscribe. And today I am going to share my March, my March plans and my February makes for this month. I'm really late getting this out before a lot of good reasons. So my February got definitely taken up by the day and night dress challenge, which is finished and I'm so glad to have hosted it and that everything went so nicely. Um, but definitely just putting it together was, was a lot of effort on my part and I kind of, I kind of tanked afterwards. And then, um, we all got sick in my house this last week too. So I've been kind of absent on doing my videos. Um, and then I've also been doing a couple of videos for DG patterns. So I've been super, super busy and tired and sick. So hopefully this, after this week, I should get back to, to my, my normal schedule of, um, putting putting together videos but today I'm talking about my uh, the things that I've been making in the last in the last bit so most of my sewing that happened in February was related to the day and night dress challenge I'm wearing my my little my little jacket my little uh, faux fur vest that I added to my coffee dress and I've been wearing this thing with everything <laughs> but there were a couple of things that I made in February that didn't get post it anywhere or anything like that so I'm gonna share those so the first thing is this this little cream striped tee this was my 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 practice my muslin for my coffee dress this is the the Valentine and Stitch Cassandra top no Cassandra dress and then um, I shortened it to a top length and then I, I this is when I practiced adding adding my little flounce on the sleeve so on this on this one it's a little a little shorter than than I ultimately ended up doing for for my coffee dress on my coffee dress it's about two it's a two and a half inches uh, that's coming out from from the sleeve cap but this was this was nice for just a top and then I practiced my back with the the keyhole at the back and then I added two little two little buttons at the top too on um, this particular fabric I couldn't make buttonholes so these are just totally non-functional and I don't you don't they don't need to be functional anyway because the the neckline is wide enough that I can fit it over my head no problem but I this is just a great basic tee it's just kind of fun and I've been wearing it quite a lot and um, yeah, I love having I love having ivory tops in my in my in my wardrobe. That's just kind of a quick grab anywhere, put it with jeans kind of kind of top. And then the other thing that I made in February was this this refashion. So this started out as a large tee. One of the ladies in So Much Talent, which is the Facebook group that I'm an admin in on on Facebook. <laughs> She makes, uh, it's the sister of Alethea. She makes, she makes uh, custom painted tees and, and she's made some for our group. There's so much talent and then it's got, you know, various sewing items and so forth on it. So I bought an ex, I bought a really, I think I bought an extra large from her with the idea that I was going to refit, refashion it at some point. Um, cause I figure if it's so much talent, then we should like have then, I don't know. I, I I love the idea of taking taking down a, a a tea that's you know for a group or something and and changing it up into something that's your own. So the first thing that I did was I I cut this I cut I cut it down so it so it fit me. Um, and in doing so, I added I added a few things. So I added these extra color, color blocking on the sleeve so I could get to a long sleeve because it was just a short sleeve tee um, and I wanted it to be just kind of a nice a lounge around the house kind of top so so I added I added the, the color blocking on the sleeves and I did this in my the way that I do my crazy jams that, that I layered layered the, the sleeve pieces on top of each other and then just zipped across it with my cover stitch to join everything so really simple kind of addition. And then the other thing that I did was that I made 
I made the lacing on, on the neckline too. So I made, I made it kind of like a little, like a placket, but it's, it goes, it, the placket goes towards the inside of it. And then I, and then I added grommets and then I made, I had some leftover of this, of this color, um, of, of this cotton. So I made, I made a little lacing on my cover stitch. And then, and then I laced it up. So really simple and just kind of fun. And I reused that. I reused the ribbing to finish off the neckline. So really simple kind of hack and very, you know, kind of fun to, to just do that. So that, that was February. Now for March, I've got, I've been doing, yeah, lots of, lots of various things. So I, I mentioned that I did the, uh, the, the patterns for DG, for DG patterns. So one of them, one of them is, this is the Lana, the Lana dress. So it's got these cool cutouts on the shoulders. Um, and it's actually midi length. So it's really, really big. It's really long on me. And I know a lot of people, a lot of shorter people like to wear really, really long, like maxi length kind of dresses and midi length and don't have a problem with that. For me, it just, it always feels like a lot visually. So I, I, I'm pro I'm going to cut this off to my knee because that's where I really like my skirts and maybe I'm boring and liking my skirts to end at my knees, but that's where I like it. So knees and above, like that's where I like it. <laughs> so I will be, I will be changing that on this particular dress. But other than that, like I really, I think that the, the, the cutouts on the sleeves are really, really cool. And I actually added a little bit of clear elastic and this ends up, this is not part of the pattern, but I, I added that in the, the tutorial for the video that I did. <clears throat> you can still hear my voice. Excuse me. Um, just to, cause that, that clear elastic really adds a lot of stability across the shoulder and it also keeps the the shoulder like on your shoulder so it doesn't end up being a cold shoulder effect which I didn't really particularly want to have I wanted to be able to to see those cutouts because they're really cool so um that's that's that dress and then let me grab the other pattern that I was working on so this is the Margaret top from DG Patterns and again this is this is the one that I did the tutorial video for that's available on DG patterns, but um, it's got it has these cool. It's it's got smocking on the sleeves, which is kind of an interesting place to put smocking, but it makes kind of this blue sawn effect. So it's a very unique sleeve, and this was the first time that I successfully smocked on a garment. I've uh, it's kind of one of those one of those techniques that I've just never I've just never really tried for really no good reason. Um, but I I'd heard somebody say that the the elastic thread from Hobby Lobby is really really awesome for smocking and it turns out it totally was. I put it in my machine, I, I hand wound the the elastic thread on the bobbin and then just popped it in my machine. I didn't even have to change the tension on it at all and uh, my machine really 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 needs a service and it had no problem so <laughs> that was pretty that was pretty great. Um, and then yeah I I, I really I like the color. This was this was fabric that I picked up in uh, in LA, and um, I think I've got I've got plenty extra to do to do something else with it. So yeah, I like this. The collar turned out really nice, and that was that. And then the, the last pattern that I just finished up for DG Patterns is the um, the Lana top. It's actually a dress. So. Um, it's got a crew neck and then it's got this cool like cut out on the, on the sleeve with these little these little bands on it and this is this this pattern is coming out i think this week so hey sneak preview right um but yeah kind of a really fun unique sort of sleeve and that's that um but i've got i've got other march plans too so i've just got a couple of quick quick things two of these are done almost done and <laughs> done almost done and not done at all <laughs> so i've got i've got some jeans that are almost done made out of out of this peachy pink fabric i love them they really are great and i say almost done because the the fabric has a different kind of stretch than i was really anticipating and as such 
I've got to, I've got some gaping in the back that I need that I need to address. So I've got to I've got to figure out a way to fix that before I can like wear them, wear them, and be comfortable. Like they look really they look really good, but um, yeah, I need I need to I need to fix the back gap because nobody wants pants that that gap at the back. That's no fun. And then I have a really awesome. Doctor Who project that I am doing with Viv of Stitches and Steams. We bought the same panel that has the TARDIS on it from Aurora Fabric Designs. And uh, we had this idea that um, she was gonna make her project and I was gonna make my project. So I am going to make, well I have made, it's, 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 uh, I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna make with it. I will tell you that it came from this, this, purple sweatshirting fabric, which used to be a, a sweatsuit, just a plain old sweatsuit. It's super cute, right? Just a basic purple sweatsuit. I wore this through at least one of my pregnancies. So it's one of those, it's one of those garments in my closet that's been there and back again. How many times? Who knows? <laughs> but um, it just, it just needed a new life. It, it's it, too big for me and I needed to do something with it. And I don't particularly like throwing out fabric if I don't have to. It's in a perfectly decent shape. So I wanted to breathe new life into it and I am going to show that in my video for next week, I believe. But with that, um, so it started, I say it started out purple and then I dyed it, I dyed it. So like almost a little bit more blue color but I did kind of a dye effect to it so it's still purple in places and I'll talk more about that in my video when I show that particular project and then the other project that is also that is not done at all is this this sweater so this is a cold water creek sweater I've had in my closet for again I have no idea how long I bought it at a consignment shop and I thought it's really it's got this beautiful um flower on it. It's just a really, really nice embellishment. But the deal is, is that it's like too big. It was too, probably two sizes too big for me when I bought it. And now it's probably three sizes too big for me. Cause I'm, I think I was pregnant with maybe my third son when I bought it, something like that. It's been a long time. Um, I actually took this to my alterations lady and she took it in. And this, this is just one of those fabrics that has a tendency, it doesn't have any kind of recovery on it, so I'm gonna have to be really, really careful in how and and how I treat this. But I need to cut it down so that it actually fits me because I really I like it. Um, I've I've cha I changed out the buttons. They used to be this kind of like dark coconut shell, and it just didn't match with the sweater at all. So I changed them for like a pearlescent button, and then the, this was like a dark coconut shell button too, which again just didn't work. So I, I, I changed that out. So I took in my alterations lady, I changed out the buttons and it's still too big. So I'm, I've got to fix that. And it, the time is now. It's been now for a really long time, but the time really is now. So I'm going to deal with that. But so those are my March plans. And um, yeah, those are my March plans. And hope I got a couple more more weeks to finish those off. Oh, the last thing. <clears throat> I started my I started a muslin for the Atsu jeans and it's not going well. <laughs> what happened is it's really funny because all those vertical seams on the Atsu, I thought these are just so flattering. They look so great. The problem is is that the smallest size is too big for me. And it's just, it's too big in, in like weird places, just weird places. It's funny, the, the, the jeans that I made from, from this, or from an October pattern, <clears throat> I've made them, I, th I think this is like my eighth pair or something like that because they fit me so well. So it was interesting to take the, the muslin that I took to, to that particular pattern and see like just how like large they were out of shape. So it's funny that, you know, the Atsu are a skinny jean and like there's, there's like inches in places where they're off. But the, the reason why it's not going well is because the, those vertical seams, once I start taking them in, they start going, they start going kind of squiffy. So I am, I'm going to 
compare it, do some comparing work to my Atobray jeans pattern to see if I can try and, and figure it out a little bit. But ultimately, I think I'm going to have to take it to my fitting group and have those ladies help me out um, just pinning it while I'm wearing it because it's really hard to obviously do that on your own. Um, and I really, it kind of makes me wonder if this isn't why I haven't, I, there haven't been a lot of people who have made the Atsu jeans before. Um, if those just fitting, fitting those vertical seams, um, just proves to be kind of, kind of, kind of tricky because the problem is like you, you take it in a little bit here and then, so the seam starts going ee, 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 and then, you know, it, it just, it's not going to hang straight. So this might... I might have to scrap this pattern. We'll see. Um, I hope not. I really would like to soldier on and just figure this pattern out because I think it's got some really cool design lines. But um, yeah, sometimes things don't work out, and sometimes you know certain pattern companies just don't work for you. So we'll we'll see. But um, yeah, that's my March plan. So let me know in the comments. Like, what are you sewing for the rest of this month? And yeah, I hope everybody's having a good, a good March and thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching. Happy sewing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends.